Now growing up in the 2000s, people were raving about netbooks, the cheap and portable alternative to laptops, as up until the introduction and widespread adoption of tablets, these were the real only portable choice for a computer in your pocket. But does it mean it's actually any good? Here we have the Acer Aspire 1ZG5, sporting a 1.6GHz Intel Atom N270, which has one core and two threads. As well as this we have 1GB of DDR2 533MHz RAM, and it also has the legendary Intel GMA950, which powers the ludicrous display of a sub-720p resolution of 1024x700, and it comes equipped with an 8GB SSD, which isn't too bad but you can choose to expand this with one of the two SD card slots. It is still portable though, coming in at roughly less than a third of the size of a standard laptop, so it is a bit portable by today's standards. Ours currently has no operating system at all, so we're going to be opting to install Tiny Windows 7, which is optimised for these kind of devices. It's incredibly underpowered this netbook, and to put it in perspective, a 2.4GHz Northwood Pentium 4, which wasn't even high-end back in its day, is roughly 55% more powerful than the Atom. And I mean, it's impressive that this Atom uses a mere 25 watts, but this brings me on to the next part. The chipset which is paired with is renowned for being terribly inefficient, which has led to the clever Acer team underclocking the GMA950 to make up for this. So as if you've thought the GMA950 wasn't bad enough, they found a way to make it even slightly more horrible. Still, Notebook Review upon its release did find that Half-Life 1 can run at 20 to 40 FPS in 640x480, but more on that later. One thing I did notice is that the screen's resolution isn't bad. I mean, it's not great by today's standards, seeing as my phone is packing more pixels than it, but upon its release, this sub-720p screen would have fit okay on this laptop. I mean, it was a budget device, and it has some pretty decent viewing angles for what it is. Still, by today's standards, this is fairly weak. In fact, this is the longest it's ever taken me to install Windows 7 on a computer. Three hours was long enough, and even then it still wasn't done and had to configure all the registry settings when I got back. But after that, it was done and ready for me to install drivers. So with that all done, let's get on with some benchmarks. 3D Mark refused to start, so I had to run 3D Mark 06, which gave us around 3 FPS in the first few tests, and then promptly crashed after failing to load some of the later tests. So I suppose we can call that a failure. Or a score of zero, whatever your preference is. I mean, I wasn't expecting it to actually get through it anyway. So the fact it got through like three tests was a surprise. But as for real world gaming, we started off with Mountain Blade on the lowest possible settings with DirectX 7 and the 640x480 resolution. And it looked absolutely awful, but was nearly playable if playable means a 23 FPS average with lows down to 10 FPS when there was more than a few fights going on, so not, not even that much. It's not completely unplayable in smaller battles, but definitely not a great experience overall. GTA Vice City ran at 27 FPS, however do keep in mind that in the middle of cities it would drop down as low as 12 FPS, which is far from ideal. And do also keep in mind that this is on the lowest possible settings in the 640x480 resolution. So not only does it not run too well, it doesn't look great either. Trying something even a little bit more modern here with Fable Lost Chapters which ran at a whopping 9fps average. At this stage you can probably tell why I'm beginning to be cynical because even in a few towns and cities we'd get 3 FPS when a lot was going on, and by a lot I mean more than 3 people on screen. Once again, this was all with the lowest settings in the 640x480 resolution. As for Source games, we have Counter-Strike Source in the 640x480p resolution, with the lowest possible settings, as Intel GMA does not like 3D gaming at all or displaying pixels, or just, just anything in general really. And with an average FPS of 2 and a minimum of 1, this was sure difficult for a competitive game, but I'm still probably better than the Russians you usually get on your team. However, Civilization 3, a completely 2D game from 2001, ran completely fine in 640x480, which it's locked to, and stayed at a 60 FPS average, which it's also locked to, only ever dropping down to 46 FPS when we advance to the next turn. The late game could prove to be more intense than the Atom CPU, but seeing this run at higher than 20 FPS was a relief for my eyes. And finally, to round it all off, we have Open Arena, which ran at 1 FPS. 
That's the average and the minimum. It was too slow to actually even get into the game, thanks to the weakened OpenGL performance on this machine. So for your older 2D games, you can definitely get away with playing them. I mean, Civ 3 ran fine, so you could probably expect to play those later SimCity titles, or maybe even the first and second Sims. And of course, the majority of those 90s AAA games would definitely be playable on this system. But gaming that's 3D and from the 2000s, yeah, it's going to be tough seeing as Vice City ran worse than the PS2. But come on, I know what you're thinking, this thing is a netbook, not a gaming laptop, and it was released as a netbook, and definitely not as a gaming laptop. So how does it handle itself on the net? And running Chrome, it took two minutes to load Reddit. And it's not like that I have a bad connection to the internet, because I was able to download all the games onto this completely fine, at around 2.5 megabytes a second. It's just the fact that the internet has got so heavy for the CPU, that it just struggles more than a Pentium 4 when it comes to loading in sites. In fact, Netbook Review even recommended this processor for just office work and not browsing the web upon its release. So it doesn't make much sense to put this processor that can't run the web in a thing called a Netbook. As for video playback, well 360p was possible when I used the H.264 FI extension, as anything higher like 480p would immediately destroy your performance, resulting in frames being dropped all over the place. And I know what you guys are thinking, why am I running Windows on this when it was clearly designed for Linux? And you're not wrong, as there was a Linux variant of this netbook, and once you get past that 32-bit limitation, you can find some decent operating systems such as the lightweight Chromixium, which runs flawlessly on this laptop. Web browsing was fast, and you can actually search the internet completely fine. In fact, you can even watch 480p content on YouTube. But do keep in mind, you won't have access to those older 90s games from beforehand unless you run Wine or Dual Boot, which could give you a performance hit due to the Linux graphics drivers not being as good as the Windows ones, which were already fairly awful. So do keep that in mind, and you may also need another hard drive. So, as it always comes down to, here's my conclusion. Do I recommend you get one of these? No, I hated everything about it. No other system has taken me three days to actually make a video on, purely because this was so slow. And even after I set it up, the benchmarks were so bad, I'd rather use our one pound PC that we built. Hell, I'm sure in terms of real processing power, an overclocked Pentium 3 would rival this netbook, and probably beat it in every aspect that isn't power consumption. They had a place in their time, but unfortunately, in 2017, with how bloated the internet's got, even going on the net on a netbook is dead, only to be replaced by phones and tablets that can do it much better. If you have one, or see one incredibly cheap, then I guess they're not bad for those really old 90s games, or maybe some NES or SNES emulation, but you won't muster too much out of this machine, and those 90s games are just about playable on any PC that isn't this now. Thank you very much for watching. Good night! So this is probably my most cynical review yet, and if you'd like to see more like it, you can always like and subscribe for more. The only downside is I actually have to review them, which actually physically pains me to do, it was that bad. But I'll catch you guys in another video.